So one of the most common questions that I get uh, from people when they hear that I work with lymphedema and also from my patients when I first see them is what causes lymphedema? Uh, there are many answers to that. And in this video, I'm going to focus on one because that is the most common one and that is obesity. Now, when I got my lymphedema training many years ago, we were told that obesity could be a risk factor, meaning that it may contribute to lymphedema along with other things. But since then, the wording has changed on that. And uh, it is, we now know that obesity can cause lymphedema. We've always known that there's been a correlation uh, between the two. That's been obvious, I think, to anyone that works with lymphedema. Um, we've seen it. Um, but now that we're learning more about how the lymphatic system works, and we can see that the obesity may actually not just be a correlation, but even a cause in itself. And I've seen that in my experience where I've seen many uh, patients that really didn't have a lot of other things uh, in their history that could explain it. So bear with me. I'm going to uh, show you some PowerPoint slides and, and uh, try to explain the connection between the two. Go. So, in, so we're going to talk about obesity as a cause for lymphedema, but I'll, I'll tell you what some of the other common causes for lymphedema is. It can be caused by surgery, uh, venous insufficiency, and I'll, I'll have another video on that coming up, um, insulin resistance, and, and I'm going to make a video on that too, uh, and also can be caused by cancer treatment. So there'll, there'll be uh, other shorter videos on those topics, but today we're going to focus on obesity. So what is lymphedema first? It's, it's when you have swelling of a limb. It could be legs, arms, anywhere. And it's caused by uh, the fact that lymph vessels are not able to drain the fluid fast enough. So super quick, what a lymph system uh, does, if you're not familiar with it, they're vessels like these green ones here. And what they do is they transport fluid throughout your body. So if you stomp your foot and you have a swollen foot, it's the lymphatic vessels that has to move that fluid out and into the blood eventually so that it can leave your body. So it's, it's like a plumbing system of the body. And that helps to understand the connection between lymphedema and obesity. Most of what you see in this picture, these green lines and these little dots, the, the lines are vessels, the dots are lymph nodes, and they are in the surface of the skin. There's lymph vessels everywhere, uh, but most of our lymph vessels and lymphatic activities in the skin and in the gut. So now you might begin to see where it may connect to obesity. So, and, and the, the thing with obesity and lymphedema is that they're a little bit of a, of a downward spiral, you can say. Uh, one causes one and then that causes the first one. So um, when we have obesity, when we have excess body fat on our body, that causes lymph stasis. Uh, that means it causes an emphatic vessels to not move fluid as good as it should through the system so fluid backs up. When fluid is backed up, meaning you have lymphedema, that signals the body to store more fat around that swollen limb. And they've seen this, uh, for example, with people that have swelling in just one limb. So let's say the right arm is, has lymphedema, maybe for a different cause, uh, surgery or something, the left arm doesn't. And then if you, if you do a cut through and you were to look at that arm, you can see that there's more body fat in the swollen arm as well. So having lymphedema causes more fat accumulation in that limb that has the swelling. So it works both ways. So why does obesity cause lymphedema? One of the reasons is simply mechanics. So if you have a soft plumbing system, they're like little rubber hoses that are supposed to transport fluid. Like, you know, if you kink a hose, it's not going to flow very good. Or if you put a lot of pressure on a, on a soft hose, it's not going to flow. So when there is excess weight, you, and, and if you have folds or if there's a lot around the abdominal area, for example, if you lie flat, the weight of that is going to pinch off in some very critical places uh, for the lymphatic system. So part of it is just simple mechanics. Uh, inflammation often comes with obesity and inflammation overloads the system. So not only now do we have a system that has a hard time moving fluid, but it also has more fluid that it needs to 
move because the lymphatic system is very much involved in, re in removing inflammatory stuff. It's not just water, uh, but it's all that, that other stuff that needs to be removed. Like I said, if you stomp a foot, uh, there's going to be some inflammation and the lymphatic system needs to be able to move that. So if you have inflammation, which, which you are more likely to have when you have, if you're overweight, then the lymphatic system becomes overburdened. So now you have a system that doesn't work as good and it has more work to do. Venous hypertension is often also correlated with obesity. So now we add that to the mix. And like I said, I'll do another uh, video on that, but that is the second biggest cause of lymphedema, but uh, after obesity, but they, they often come together. Often if you depend on how uh, obese someone is, obesity causes some, usually causes someone to be less active. And that's another one of those cycles. If we're less active, we're more likely to be obese. And if we're obese, we're less likely to be active because it's more difficult to move. And the lymphatic system needs muscle activity to function properly because, and again, that's mechanics. A muscle that moves uh, manipulates and massages the lymph vessels and that keeps that fluid moving. So if we're more sedentary, we're, um, the lymphatics aren't going to move as fast through our system. And then another topic is insulin resistance and diabetes, which is really kind of a root cause for many, many of the chronic illnesses uh, that are very common in America and in the Western world. And, uh, and it's very much correlated with obesity. So that also contributes and it, insulin resistance in itself is also, you could say, bad for the lymphatic system. There'll, there'll be another video on that because that's a topic of its own. So, and I mentioned that then you get that spiral where having lymphedema then causes more fat accumulation in that limb. So I know that's, that's sort of a, a sad story. It's, it's a story of a downward spiral. So I want to end with a uh, with an upward spiral, because I always want to leave hope at the end of these videos, because there is hope. These things are not irreversible. If we are spiraling downward, it is also possible to spiral upward. So what can we do if we have obesity and lymphedema? And when I say this, I base it on true uh, experience from the clinic. I have seen many, many people turn this uh, spiral around and turn it into an upward spiral, people that I have worked with. And so I believe it's possible for you to, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of work. Step one, you have to find a good lymphedema therapist that can work with you on reducing the symptoms of the swelling. We got to get that swelling down because the swelling can cause many other problems like wounds, infections, draining, all kinds of things. So that's our, our acute approach is to get the swelling down and a good lymphedema therapist will know how to do that. The main, in, uh, the main ingredient of a good lymph lymphedema therapy program is compression. If you find a therapist that only wants to massage and doesn't want to use compression, then go look for another one. Um, step two, you've got to maintain that swelling. So a therapist can help you bring the swelling down, but you will have to keep that swelling down. And again, the number one ingredient in that is compression. There'll be more videos on more details on a good lymph lymphedema program, but if it doesn't include good compression, it's not a good maintenance program. So now you're in maintenance, you're keeping the swelling down. Now you can begin the, the long-term process. And we recommend a ketogenic lifestyle. Ketogenic meaning low carbohydrate way of eating. And if you can join a program that helps you along with that would be good um, and absolutely let your doctor know what you're doing. Um, you always wanna have your doctor on board if you do something like that. Um, but that is effective in, in helping weight loss and it's also been shown to improve lymphatic flow in itself. So as you begin to lose weight, your lymphatic system will become healthier. And as you feel better, you are more likely to start becoming more active. As you become more active, you're probably more likely to start sleeping better. And this is the upward spiral I'm talking about. So then just like it can spiral downward, it can spiral upward. So it's worth to begin. And I think the best time to begin is now. Uh, and if we can be a help of you along the way, uh, 
subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel and uh, check out our, we have a couple of websites and different programs. So check all that stuff out too. And I wish you the best of luck. If you are one that's suffering with this, first of all, it's not your fault. And second of all, there are things you can do to improve it and start an upward spiral. I wish you the best.